This video is on capacitors and general info on them. So here I wrote down some info on capacitors when they're in series. So here's an example of capacitors in series. When they're in series, you use the reciprocal formula to add them up, which is 1 over the total capacitance, which is equal to... Now here's where you put down just how, however many capacitors you have. So in this instance, I pretended as if there's two capacitors in series. So it would be 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. But if you have three capacitors, then you would just add another one here, which would be 1 over C3. Then you just add them. Um, so when capacitors are in series, the they each share the same charge. So they would each have... So if this one had, if there was a total of uh, 20 coulombs, they would each have 20 coulombs. Uh, they also share the same current. The current goes through them, uh, through each one of them, it's the same current. So they have exact same current. And when they're in series like this, the voltage and the capacitance are inversely proportional. So continuing on, if you have capacitors in parallel, they, these guys just share the same current, or the same, I'm sorry, share the same voltage. And when you add them, it's just the total capacitance is just equal to C1 plus C2. And if you would have a third capacitor or a fourth or a fifth, it's just C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4, however many capacitors you have that are in parallel. Now, uh, the capacitance is actually equal to the voltage or the charge divided by the voltage. And charge is equal to the current multiplied by the time in the seconds. So here I wrote down this, this circuit. It's got three uh, capacitors in series. C1 is 100 uh, farads. C2 is 200 farads. C3 is 300 farads. The current here is given as 10 amps, and the time that we're going to charge these three capacitors is, will be 20 seconds. So uh, what I want you to do is to try to solve these three problems. Uh, pause the video now and uh, try to work them out then just start the video again and then just see how you did so I'm, I'm assuming you already paused it so the first one find the total charge of the circuit so how do we do that well you actually have to use this formula the charge the total charge is equal to the current multiplied by the time since uh, since the current in the circuit is equal to 10 amps we're just gonna plug that in and we're going to multiply it by 20 seconds, which is how long we're going to charge the capacitors for, to get a total charge of 200 coulombs. And that's how you do the first one. Now let's do the second one. In the second one, we want to determine which capacitor is going to have the greatest voltage. So remember that capacitors are inversely proportional, or the capacitance is inversely proportional to the voltage, which means that the greater the capacitance, the lower the voltage. So if you look at these three, the one, the capacitor that has the greatest capacitance is C3, which means that C3 will have the lowest voltage. C1, on the other hand, has the lowest capacitance. So C1 will have the greatest voltage. And C2 is just in the middle. So that's all we wrote here, that the voltage is inversely proportional to capacitance. So when you have a lot of voltage, the capacitance will be low. And on the other hand, if the capacitance is high, then the, the voltage will be low. So here I wrote C3 has the greatest capacitance and the lowest voltage. C1 has the lowest capacitance and the greatest voltage. So now let's go ahead and prove that. Here I just rewrote the information. So we're going to use this formula that the capacitance is equal to the charge divided by the voltage. And we're just going to rewrite this equation to so we can solve for the voltage. So the voltage is just going to be equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. So here I, I wrote down uh, for V1 is equal to the charge divided by C1. For uh, V2, that's going to be equal to the charge divided by the capacitance of capacitor 2. So let's plug in those values and find out and see which one actually has the greatest voltage. So uh, the charge is equal to 20 coulomb, no, it's 200 coulombs. This is not fair, that should be coulombs. Uh, that's going to be divided by C1, which is 100 farads. So V1 has a voltage of 2 volts. Now let's see V2. 
So V2, the charge is 200, 200 coulombs. So 200 coulombs divided by C2, which C2 is 200 farads. So that's going to have a voltage of 1. Now the last one, C3, so here this one has a ch uh, charge of 200 coulombs divided by C3, which is 300 farads. So if we divide that out, you're going to get 2 thirds of a volt or 0 0.667, depending how far you want to carry it, volts. So uh, as you can see, uh, we, were, we were correct. The, that V1 actually has the greatest voltage. And C1, C1 actually has the lowest capacitance. So I mean, you can see right, right here, C1, 100 farads. But uh, that capacitor, or the voltage there, uh, V1, has 2 volts. So uh, I hope this video made sense, uh, and I hope you liked it. So good luck in your classes, and if you did like it, just click, uh, just like it for me. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.